Hey, welcome to Church Online. I hope you're doing fine. I really feel well. I feel like a new person. But it's so cool that you take time to enjoy our online service. And we continue in our series, You Are Made For It. Enjoy this message of our location pastor, Werner Häusler. Stand up. Grow in faith. Live your calling boldly. For a time like this. Are you with us? You are made for it. Hey, good morning, church. Today, I'm not in the studio. I'm, <laughs> I'm sending life out of my office. And we are in the midst of the series, You Are Made For It, where we look at, at it, even if the life is unpredictable, we can go uh, confidently and boldly in our, in, in our calling, and even grow in this, this time. And we are in the midst of the prayer and fasting revive time. And last Sunday, and also first prayer meeting, Pastor Ed had a word for us, what he has planned for us, and this is what we believe God says about 2022. And in the beginning of this message, I want to mention it. This is a year of consolidation. In a time of change, shift, uncertainty, I want to consolidate you and the church so that you will be stronger deeply rooted in me and my kingdom. You will be like the setters of Lebanon, trees that are amazingly flexible, strong and valuable, because they can withstand the storm. You will stand, remain safe, steadfast in an uncertain and wavering world. Think and pray in a different spirit, because I have given you a different spirit. Think of expansion, growth and opportunity. Believe in the favor of God, and you will stand tall while others bow in fear. Point to the kingdom of God, prophesy to the people, for it will bring life and hope. I do not know about you, but when I read that, when I heard that, faith and, and also courage were rising up in me because I believe God has, has great plans for us. Deeply rooted in God and His kingdom, we should be steadfast in this wavering world. How strong is that? And I believe and know that God is with us, that He is for us, especially in the season we are in. It's not a coincidence that we are now living in this time. And this morning, I want to talk about a topic which fits perfectly to this word. And I want to start with Psalm 92, verses 14 to 15. Those planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will bear fruit, be full of sap and fresh. Those planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will bear fruit, be full of sap and fresh. And today's message... <laughs> is being planted in the house of the Lord. And those who are planted in the house of the Lord, those will flourish healthy. That's what this portion says. What needs a tree to, to grow healthy? Light, water, good ground, good soil. But it also needs a good um, surrounding around this, this tree. I, I was working in a development aid and we were visiting a project in the center of um, uh, America and that they are producing cacao um, cacao for, for chocolate here in Switzerland and so we met with those four farmers who were, were producing cacao and they told us what is important for those trees to grow healthy and it's been more than just light and the uh, and put soil, so they had to plant other trees around them to give shade, other herbs and trees to, to um, work against pests that are befalling this tree. 
and they also had to make sure that the trees are planted at a good place, not at a steep slope because of, of landsliding, not directly to the sun. So that was fair trade cacao from of premium quality and there are standards that needed to be taken care of. And that is very important because you could plant this tree somewhere and water it now and then, giving some, making sure there is some light, preparing some good soil, and then most likely it will grow. And maybe it, it would grow somehow healthy, but it would never reach the premium quality it could reach. And so to say, the tree would never be able to unfold its whole potential. And I think it's the same with us people, when it is about being planted at the right place. You can plant yourself somewhere, you can um, make roots somewhere, but not everywhere you will be able to um, develop all your potential that is within you. So in Psalm 92, it is written that there is a certain place where you can flourish, where you can bear fruit, and you can be full of sap even in old age. Who, do, who doesn't want that, to be fresh and full of sap in, in old age? And that's the place of God, the house of God, that's where you can flourish. But it doesn't happen automatically. There are specific decisions that we have to make, make to experience this promise. All of us, we have this potential. Everyone has this potential without ex, um, except exception. But it takes steps from us to, to make something out of the potential that God already put in us. And a potential that moves the society around us, that moves our own lives. And today I would love to talk about these specific decisions that we should make. And I hope and pray that they will help us understand why we are made and created to be in God's house. And I want to continue in Jeremiah 17, verses 7 to 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose confidence the Lord has become. For he will be like a tree planted by the water, stretching out its root by the stream, which doesn't fear the heat when it comes, but it, its leaves remain green. Even in a drafty year, he doesn't need to worry, and it doesn't cease to bear fruit. Amen. This person trusts God, and out of this trust, this person decides to plant herself, himself, and to bear fruit. And in, in this portion, we find these six decisions that I want to look at. The first one is like, of course, I plant myself. For he will be like a tree planted by the water. And the fact is, you have to be planted somewhere if you want to grow. And it is up to you and me whether we get planted in a good surrounding or bad surrounding. You could be surrounded by bad decisions or where people bring you down with words or they, they really sap your energy out of you, or they want to have drama in your life, or you can be planted in an, in an addiction, and you think like, oh, it's cool for a moment, but actually seeing it long term, it, it will destroy your life. And fact is, we can go through life for a little while, we can even move forward, um, when we are planted in such a place, but the question is, how long can we survive in such a place without our lives being de destroyed? And therefore, the decision to be planted in a good place where there is joy and life, that gives joy and, and life, and therefore it's so important to decide for such a place that gives you these things. Do you want to be in a surrounding where you're not welcomed, your contribution is not really asked for, or to be planted in a place where you're reminded that it's good to be, to be alive in such a time as this. And Psalm 92 says, 
it is the church. There is this healthy surrounding where you will be blessed, also to be a blessing for others. And scientists found that if you take a banana tree, which could actually become seven meters high, and if you plant it in a glass box, and you add water, enough water, enough light, good soil, this banana tree will only reach up to the lid of this box, and then it will stop growing, and once, sometimes it will die. Only because there is a lid, there is a ceiling, because there is a restriction to his growth. Only because he was grow he was planted there. And church is not such a place where there is space for growth of others, where there is always a next step to be done, where there is space for next generation, where there is space for every person to walk into the plans that God has for them. So the first decision and best decision that you can make if you want to flourish, be planted in a church. The second decision is, I stretch out my roots. Jeremiah says, stretching out its roots by the stream. My question to those who are all planted in a church, how easy would it be to uproot you? Because the deeper and the stronger those roots are, the more difficult it is to uproot it. And it's incredible what strength the trees need to have to withstand a storm. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of wind for a, for a tree to fall. And that's the same when we are actively involved in church life, like on Sunday being there, where friendships are built through connect groups, maybe you're in a team, in the stream team, you, you serve with your giftings, you invest your finances, and for those people it would be so difficult to, to just be uprooted there, because their life is there, their friends are there, connections, relationships are there, they're not just planted, but they have decided to make roots. It doesn't mean that their whole life is church, but they have decided that church is the place where they're going to stretch out their roots to grow healthy. And they know out of this strength, they're going to bear fruit in other areas of their lives. But for those who are for years at the edge of church life, it is so easy to fall after the first storm. I believe we all know people who over the last 18, 24 years, month have been distracted, gave up, or just stepped out. That means most likely their, their roots haven't been that deep or that strong as we thought. And the fact is sometimes we are running from those good places that we could grow, but it's, it's so much effort to just be continually there and it takes time to see results and whatever we do, we want to see instant results. Maybe like Paul says in Hebrew, therefore it's important that we do not stay away from our meetings as some have become accustomed to doing, but that we encourage one another and all the more so because as you can see yourselves, the day is approaching when the Lord will return. We stretch out our roots by again and again coming together and also encouraging others and being encouraged by others. Why, why again or make again or making for the first time the decision? If you are not planted in a church, then stay a little bit longer and build relationship. And when you stay longer after the, the service, listen to stories of other people, <laughs> Let get invited by someone else for the lunch or invite someone else to your lunch. <laughs> Be part of a team, get information about connect groups. There are so many ways to get rooted in church life. We are not created to go through life by ourselves, but together being on the journey with others. Third point is, I'm not afraid of the heat. Jeremiah speaks of a tree which doesn't fear the heat when it comes. It says when it comes, not if it comes. So 
the challenges will come with 100% certainty. There will be challenges, hurdles that we have to overcome. So what are you going to do when heat comes, when it is there? And best is to remain steadfast when problems are hitting you. As it is written with this tree in Jeremiah, let us not draw back and hide when there are challenging challenges approaching, but stand firm like a strong tree. And the Bible says that God puts our feet on a on a rock and he makes our steps firm. So when you are on the journey with God, then you are planted on this rock, and this rock is stronger than any challenge that you're going to face. In Psalm 66, verse 12, it is written, We fell into the fire, into the water as well, but you, God, led us out and blessed us with abundance. So when we are planted and, and make roots, so we, we will be able to go through the storm. Sometimes we have to go through fire. <laughs> But on the other side, we come out stronger. And there he wants to bless us with abundance. When we decide to stand steadfast and not just to give way when storm or heat comes. And fourth decision, I remain healthy. Jeremiah says, but its leaves remain green. Green leaves mean that there is something healthy. When you have plants at home, then <laughs> you know you shouldn't forget giving water <laughs> or watering the plants. I often do so. But suddenly you realize um, sooner or later they will die. <laughs> but also the, the health of our spirit should, we should neglect. Sooner or later we're going to uh, grow weak in our spirit and I... I realize that the older I get, it's, it's more difficult to stay healthy. And early in my life, I could drink as much sweet drinks, Cokes, and so on, Red Bull, whatever there is, and eating chips as much as I wanted. And I didn't gain weight. I, I couldn't gain weight. And today, I can't allow myself. I can't even think about that. And or think about eating what I ate back then. And I think it's the same with our spirit. You know what is doing your spirit good. And the longer you are in faith, the, the more you could maybe think like, oh, another message to about this topic. Or, or oh. But Psalm 92 says that we want to stay healthy at old age. And so you shouldn't neglect it and shouldn't just... Let it happen by chance. We need to take responsibility for our spiritual life. So I believe Sunday service is is a good place to grow. And uh, for you being here, see, shows me that you you are not just um, ignorant to to your spiritual growth, but you you can't make your health. Um, dependent on one good meat meal, sorry. But you should um, pay attention to the relationship to God. You can stay in contact with Him, read the Bible, pray. Even the Son of God, Jesus, needed time to draw back. Well, it was about Him building His relationship with His Father. And out of that, out of the strength of those times He had with Him, he could go, he could heal people and change the life of so many people. How is your health situation? And the fifth decision is, I don't allow myself to be led by circumstances. And in Jeremiah it is written, even in a draft year, it doesn't need to worry. So we do not need to worry about challenges. Sometimes it's, it's not just one challenge, but a season of difficult challenges. And it, it means that we shouldn't be led by all these crisis challenges happening to us. And then they don't have strength to stand above and 
to look from a different perspective upon this season, upon these challenges, and to say in the midst of this season, I, I tell you, we can think differently and we, sh we will speak differently to this season that might be challenging, whatever it means for you. Coming back to, to the trees, to the cacao trees. So the first two harvests you, you can't actually use for this premium quality chocolate. So that means within the first two years the fruit is not good enough. Only in the third year this cacao tree can reach this premium quality fruits that are well enough. And what's incredible is the big crowd of these um, farmers um, don't want to wait for the third year to, to plan to continue with that. And so they go back to what they know, tomatoes, salad, which is much easier, goes much faster. And maybe this is what they know all their life and, and have done so. Instead of waiting for the third year where this tree reaches the quality that can be sold best. Sometimes we are in such a difficult season in our lives, maybe sickness, no job for a long, long time, or the relationship to your husband, your wife is, is difficult, you don't see a way out, and, and we don't see a reason to continue. And then most likely we fall back into old habits. But those people who trust in the Lord, they don't allow themselves to be led by circumstances. So this difficult season, they're going to have an end. They will come to an end. They will not last forever because God already set a point as the end of the, this, that season, also for the season that we are in as a, a society. So those people that trust him, they don't give up. They continue. They, they draw their um, um, roots deeper. They build or continue to build relationships with others <laughs> because they know like spring is coming again and the promises are on the other side of this season, of, on the other side of these challenges, whatever it is in your life. So let us trust God, let us remain planted, especially when it is difficult. And the sixth decision is I make um, fertility to, uh, to my lifestyle. And Jeremiah says, it doesn't cease to bear fruit. So it is a lifestyle of bearing fruit. So <laughs> bearing fruit, that's the main purpose of a tree. So it, it is created to be a blessing with shade and with fruits to the people around. And we people are also created to bear fruit, to be a blessing to others. And as I said in the beginning, God wants for you to develop your whole potential, that you discover your purpose, your calling, and He wants to show you His good plans of hope and the future. And He also gives you a strategy. Plant yourself at a good place. Stretch out your roots deep and then bear fruit right where you are. And as those... Uh, as the fruits of every tree are unique, are the fruits of every person unique. God no knows what He has entrusted to all of us and what He is expecting of all of us. Our re um, responsibility in that is to stay faithful in the small and in the big. And I want to end with, with these words from Jesus in John 15, 4-5. Jesus says, Abide in me, and I will abide in you. A branch cannot bring forth fruit on its own. It must abide in the wine. Likewise, you cannot bring forth fruit unless you abide in me. I am the wine and you are the branches. If anyone abides in me and I abide in him, he bears abundant fruit. Without me you can do not, nothing. Sorry, pardon. So this branch needs to be tied to the wine. 
to stay alive. And as a follower of Jesus, we need to remain steadfast and close to him. Firstly, when we want to survive, and secondly, when we want to bear fruit. Otherwise, we are like a branch that is broken off the tree or the vine and eventually dies. How do we stay connected? We, we get planted, we stretch out our roots, we are not afraid um, of the heat and we remain healthy and we don't worry in drafty seasons. So we are created to be planted in the house of the Lord. How does such a lifestyle transform the life around us? And maybe you say, yes, I want to get planted and do all that. And you can consider how would that transform your surrounding, the people around your family, kids, the working place, the students, university, or your neighbors. How will those places be transform, transformed? If you decide, I will be planted. Because one thing is for sure, God's plans are so much better, higher than we could ever imagine. And I believe what society needs right now is people that God are going through life with, with faith and with um, hope. Because there are people who are afraid. And, and I looked at this. Uh, or let us be people who are looking on certain issues with with faith and courage, and and we we want to be people who advance the kingdom of God as we go forward. And as Pastor Ed said, the kingdom of God goes forward through bold people, and not through people who are shaken. And I believe. A relation goes with that, what it means to be planted in the house of God and how valuable it is, not only for your own life, but also for the people around you. Therefore, what I can say at the end of this message, plant yourself. If you're already planted, then really stretch out your roots deep. And then you're going to see what God is about to do, especially if there are challenging seasons coming towards you. I would love to pray for all of us. And maybe if you feel comfortable, then you can stand up right where you are, stretching out your hands, and I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you have planted it like that, that we become part of your family by being planted in, in a church by deciding for your son Jesus that we stay connected with other people so that we don't need to go through life on, on ourselves. Thank you that you give so many examples or pictures like this tree and we want to be like this tree that we've read in Jeremiah about it, that remains steadfast, that is planted at the, at the water, that draws strength from you and is encouraged in itself and also becomes a blessing to others. I pray for those people that are listening this message which are not planted in a house, that they see a next step, that they may be test this pl being planted, that they make a decision of, of um, building relationships and maybe people that are n n not really sure about their next step, that you show them and I, so that they can understand like, yes, I am created to be planted in your house. Father, we give you all the honor because we know the church can be the hope of people, especially in this season that we are in. And in your name we pray. Amen.
invite you to give something, to offer something. If you're regularly with us, also to give your tithe. And on the screen you see the different ways of giving. Thank you so much for your contribution and otherwise Follow us on social medias, Instagram, Facebook and also YouTube. So I wish you a great day. Check out our website, there you find all information also about our revived prayer time, which is currently ongoing. And otherwise, have a blessed time. See you soon.